Um, uh, yes, this is the first chapel. Um, and usually in the first chapel, we talk about, um, well, we can talk about many things, but most of all, I just uh, was praying. And uh, I actually went into ninth grade devotion one time for summer school. Um, and I did, we, got, uh, we did read through Jeremiah's uh, passage. And have you ever heard of Jeremiah? Yes, Daniel says yes. In what, which uh, part of the Bible does he appear and Old talk? Testament. Old Testament. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> uh, yes, he's one of the prophets. One of the prophets. And what, what do the prophets, prophets do? Do you guys know? What is a prophet? What is a prophet? Raise your hand if you know. I'm sure many of you know, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Yeah, I'll listen. <laughs> what does a prophet do? Like, what, what was the job of, of, of a prophet in the Bible? They prophesied. Aha, uh -huh, they prophesied. Then what is prophesy? Uh. <laughs> Younger kids, do you understand what prophecy and prophesying means? You don't know. Aha. Uh -huh. So it means that they are speaking the word of God. Right now, do we need someone else to come and this is God's will and God's word to you? Does anybody have to do that? No, why not? Because we have Bible. Jesus already died for us, so now we can talk to God one-on-one, -on -one, right? We don't need someone else to come and tell us, right? Now we can talk to him personally. But before, because this is Old Testament, as Daniel told us, right? Jeremiah was the one of the prophets. There were many prophets that came to Israelites, God's people, and said, this is God's word, right? They had to do that or else they didn't know, right? God doesn't usually come to people to speak. It was prophets who came and spoke. And Jeremiah spoke this passage, but many more than this, but I just uh, brought this for today. Let's actually have you read two lines and I read two lines and we take turns. Okay, so you start first. Ready, go. Yes, he is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream. And is not anxious in the year of drought for it does not cease to bear fruit. So it seems like this prophet, Jeremiah, is giving such a positive and nice and happy message. Do you think that was what Jer Jeremiah was doing in his time, mostly? No. Not really, not really. I mean, of course, he had these wonderful words for God's people, but Jeremiah, Jeremiah was known as, also known as uh, the weeping prophet because there were many times that he was like, I have to tell the people of God this kind of message, really. And he really tried to listen to the Lord to do that, but it was not easy. So he was, keep on telling people. Um, and this is how Israelites were living back then. Uh, you know how Korea is divided into two, north and south. Israel was kind of like that. There were some fights, you know, struggles, and then they were divided into two, to northern Israel and southern Israel. And southern Israel was Judah. And that's where um, Jeremiah was speaking to the people of Israel in that place. And he was saying, you know, if you don't listen to God, exile is coming. What is exile? I don't know. You don't know, right? <laughs> good, very good. Okay, so, um, I actually have the meaning in the next, here, yes. So what is exile? Well, it says it means to be forced to leave one's home or, or country, uh, typically as a form of punishment or as a result of political or social conditions. So exile means, huh, jeez, because you've done so wrong in our country, now you can't live here anymore. That is exile. So we say you have to go to I don't know where. Some other country. That is exile. I okay. <laughs> okay. So it's like kick, being kicked out of your country, um, and you are not able to stay in your comfortable place. That is exile. Yeah. And Jeremiah had to say to God's people, "Ex 
exile is coming. You cannot stay here anymore. This is your country, God said, but you cannot live here anymore. Why? Why do you think this was the message from Jeremiah to God's people? What were they doing? What were the Israelites doing? Aha, we always talk about golden calf, all these idols, right? We know that Israelites, a lot of people, almost all of them, didn't really trust in God. They were not following God's word. Even though God was the one who saved them from Egypt, you know, God was the one who loved them so much. God is the one who created them. Not only that, he was keep on providing for them, saying, I love you, I love you, you love me. I love you, so you love me. That's all God wanted. But they would not listen. They are so stubborn, they will just cover their ears. Ah, what are you saying? Of course, they didn't act that way, but the way that they were living their lives, they were not listening to God at all. They were just worshiping whatever they wanted because that's something that they can see, right? God is not visible to them. Even now, right? We don't see God here, right? But... Um, even so, in the Old Testament, they were feeling like, we need somebody. We need something to you know, ask for help, and we need something to worship and praise. But we don't see God, so let's just follow what other people are doing. Some people who don't know God, they were making all these idols, right? And then they were trying, uh, just copying them and worshiping something else. And of course, God, as you guys know, what is the Ten Commandments? What does the Ten Commandments say? What's the first thing? Love your neighbor is first thing. Oops. <laughs> Good try, but that's not the first thing. What is the first thing? Worship only who? God. God, right? God really wants us to just love him and just worship him. But that simple thing was not being followed. And God was not happy. So he was saying, well, if you keep not listening to me and not loving me and not just following what I tell you to do, then what's going to happen? I love you so much, so I have to give you punishment. Right? And that's what your parents should do too, right? In the houses of your family, right? If you are not following, your parents cannot just say, it's okay, it's okay. They can do that because they love you so much. If they're your parents, they will be disciplining you, right? If something's wrong, if you're making wrong decision, if you're not respecting, then they will say something, they must, right? Teachers also, right? We give demerits, I say this every time. We give demerits not because we hate you, Right? Because we love you so much, we want to have you learn, right? I know it sounds, what? Are you sure? <laughs> but that's what God is doing, right? Because he loves them so much. He doesn't have to. You know, think about it. God is just powerful, strong God. Why can't he just demolish them all? They're not listening. Ah, ah, abomination. Let's just get rid of them all. He can do that. He's God, right? But he didn't do that. He said, I love you. Guys, listen. Listen to me. Come. Worship me. Not the false idol. That's nothing. Right? And people is so foolish. They will not listen. Now, Jeremiah was speaking like that. And of course, the Israelites were not happy. They were so arrogant and they were so proud of themselves. And they were thinking, what? What are you talking about? I don't want to hear you anymore. So they even put him in these things called stocks. I don't know if you guys know from like Joseon time, like uh, this is very similar to what happened to Korean people too a long time ago. When they were in prison, they would put their legs or head or something like that, like with the wooden stocks. Yeah, have you ever seen that? I don't know. But anyways, so Jeremiah had to be put in prison because Israelites didn't want to listen to him. They said, that's false. That is not true. And there were even false prophets. They said, I'm a prophet. And God says to me that you will not be in exile, that you will be fine. Just live how you live and we'll be fine. There were prophets like that. And they were saying, if you believe in God, everything's okay. You will not suffer. Who says you will be in exile? But Jeremiah had to give the right message because that is what God was saying to him. Because God loves you so much, he wants you to come back. And people will just not listen. So... His message was keep on, he was keep on saying what God was saying. Repent, come and listen, worship me only. This will be the only way that you can live the life that I'm trying to give to you, right? And very sadly, Israelites, they decided to not listen. And what happens? They were in exile. 
So Babylonia uh, was the country that was, Babylon, Babylon, uh, was the country that had such power and the whole empire was building that way and uh, people from Judah had to actually be in exile, they had to move to Babylon, they couldn't, you know, uh, live in their country and they had such a hard time for how long, do you know? Anybody knows? Yeah? Wow, very good, yes, Brandon, that's right. They failed, they didn't listen and they were in exile for 70 years. But is that the end of the story, do you think? Is that the end of the story in the Bible? God says, oh, you didn't listen, you were punished, and I hate you, the end. Of course not. Then why are we here, right? As Christians, we're here not because God said, uh, you were punished, that's me, I hate you. That's not God's message, right? God said all these. God led them in that uh, suffering and struggle, not because God doesn't listen to them, not because God doesn't like them, because he loves them so much, they had to go through this hard time. And some people, I'm sure, had to die there in the country that wasn't their own, right? It was not easy. It's not the message of just being Christian is very easy and prosperous and success. That is not the message here, right? Jeremiah. And, and there are many prophets who had to go through this hard time to keep on telling the people of God, you have to listen and come back. Whatever you want to do naturally, that is not right. You are sinful. You have to come back to God himself. Right? And this is not the new message to us. Right? We hear this today as well, to us as well. But the same message is not ending there. Right? It always ends with the love of God, the love of Jesus Christ. Right? He is the loving and forgiving God who is giving that message. And the passage that we were looking at, was that the message of just punishment? No. It is about hope and restoration. Right? And Jeremiah 17, 7 to 8, again, we read this just before. Right? It says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. And it says, he is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream. Right? Water that's flowing and does not fear when heat comes. It's so hot outside. Right? It's, it's very scary for its leaves remain green even in that heat. And it's not anxious in the year of drought when there's no rain, still. You don't have to worry because it's not gonna cease. It's not gonna stop to bear fruit. That is God's message. This isn't just about punishment, but God is saying, if you stay within me, if you love me. I remember Dr. Peter was actually um, in the summer school. Uh, he was giving out the message of staying in him, right? the uh, branches and, and the vine, uh, right? Jesus is the vine and we are the branches, right? Staying in him is what this Bible verse is talking about. So this is actually the message of hope and restoration. And uh, if you know, does anybody re remember any other Bible passage that talks about the tree planted by water? Anybody? Nobody? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Many poems in this Bible book. Somebody knows. Raise your hand. Psalm, yes. And it's the very first chapter of Psalm. Actually, this is the Bible passage that my father-in-law, which is uh, Mr. Caleb and Mr. Peter's uh, um, grandpa, he always memorized this and told the you know, grandchildren, you have to memorize this Bible verse. God says. <laughs> and he still does. But anyways, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. And it says, he is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And uh, in all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. This is the first chapter of, this, uh, of Psalm that we, I hope you heard many times. And when I hear this passage, I always think of this picture. Um, it might not be something I saw from my life, but if you think about how a tree is planted near water, you know, the roots are um, in the water, near in the water area, then it, we learned in science what's going to happen to this tree. It's going to grow 
well, it's going to grow very well, and it's going to bear fruit because it has enough water to go through all the way to the end of the leaf and all the way to the fruit, right? So this stream of water is who in this passage, do you think? Of course, God, Jesus, right? So when we stay in him, when we are with him, when we're very close with him, God says, if you're with me, I love you, and you will be bearing fruit. You will not worry about being um, suffering, right? Even if your life is not easy. As we start this semester, I'm sorry, I have to say, it's not just about you will succeed, you will do well. It's not just about that. You will suffer. I, I'm just, I, maybe I'm like Jeremiah, I'm so sorry. But even first graders, studying is not easy. I'm not going to say it's so easy. Why can't you do it? I'm not going to say that, right? God says life is not easy. Right? Because of the sinfulness that we have in this world, it's not easy at all. Right? And we sin. We fail. You know, we, we don't just, we're not perfect. And that's okay. Of course, it's, we're not saying, oh, so it's okay. I'm going to sin. I will not listen. God says it's okay. I will be forgiven. Of course, that's not what we're saying. Right? We need to always try our best to follow his will and stay in him. But even if we fail and even if we suffer, we trust him because he's the one who will give us that comfort. He's the one who loves us every time, all the time, right? And he says, you'll be like a tree planted by water. You will bear fruit no matter drought, no matter any hard time. I'm with you all the way, right? So I want to give you this message of hope and restoration that Jesus already actually solved the whole problem of sin, but we're still working on it because Jesus will come back, and until that time, we're still living in this world. So let's keep on trusting him and going forward, but help uh, encourage each other as well, and, and make sure you don't feel in that time of just feeling like, I'm a failure, I can't do anymore. But that's when God says, I'm with you. Okay? So you put your trust in the Lord, and that's what we want to do, and that's God's message. So let's pray.